All right, so I want to talk about why did Jesus die? I've asked this question to a number of people that reject once saved, always saved, and uh, ask them to explain why did Jesus die. It's very important. <laughs> it's without it, you got nothing. All right, so let me let me try to make this simple. Okay. I'm not, uh, I didn't prepare for this, but we're just going to go over, first of all, why did he die? Or what did he accomplish by dying? And um, basically, uh, or real simply, I should say, um, that his death covered our sin. <laughs> I mean, everybody should know that, right? So his laying down his life was an offering to God to cover our sins forever. All right, Hebrews 10, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. All right, and for by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified okay them that are sanctified are those of us that are born of the spirit of god that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit all right so once you are born of the spirit of god you are sanctified you are perfected forever because you have the perfect spirit in you now you're still going to have your war against your flesh but be confident that he which has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. All right, so we have that, that perfect spirit living in us. All right, because Jesus Christ laid down his life and it covers our sins once for all. So this offering made to God is something that goes all the way back to the very beginning it, and so i mean to me it's like how do you how do you not realize what's happening here and claim to be a student of the bible all right so we, when we first read about cain and abel all right let's see yeah we're doing good on time here so oh Let's see if I can find a quick, All right, let's just open up Genesis 4 here, make this easier. Okay, so we read about Cain and Abel in Genesis 4, and uh, it says that Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. Alright, so you see both Cain and Abel were making offerings to God. And but there was a difference between the two. But this offering that Abel made did not perfect uh, anybody or anything. As we, uh, we read in Hebrews chapter 10 again, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. All right, so these people, these guys were uh, offering, making offerings to God. To cover their debts. Alright, and so let's go. Uh, let's go to. Well, yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but um, let's go. Let's go to Job. Let's see if I can find it here.
Yeah. So, like in the book of Job, you see, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also. And Satan came also among them. And then also in Job 2, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. So these guys were making offerings to God. The same thing was going on with Abraham. Um, let's see. What is that verse? What is that verse? Alright, so well, anyway, let me just tell you what happened, what's going on here. So, um, God asked Abraham to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice instead of animals. He said, offer your son. And Abraham, having great faith, was going to offer his son Isaac. And the angel of the Lord stopped him and said, um, offer this ram instead. Okay. And let's see, what verse is that? And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. So instead of offering Isaac, uh, the angel had Abraham offer a ram. So now that's so that's what they did. They offered animals instead, the animal sacrifices, but God offered his only begotten son. Alright, so it wasn't man that had to offer his son, it was God that offered his son. So that whosoever believes in him will be, will have their sins taken from them forever. All right, just like, oops, 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 that's not a verse. I'm not sure if I got this right here. No, let me do this here. And let me try it again. Jeez, I don't know the Bible at all. Where's this at? Oh, duh. Jeez. See, I need to, I need to read, read more. But it's verse twenty-one, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So how is he going to do that? By offering his body, by laying down his life for us. So let me see if I can find something here. That would... Greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. So that's exactly what Jesus did, isn't it? He laid down his life. And this is no small thing that he died, that he laid down his life knowing that he was going to be killed, that he was going to die. And he did it for us. It's no small thing. Imagine. Would you do that? Would you be willing to do that today? To lay down your life for somebody else. And really he's laying down his life for a bunch of people that reject him. And that hate him. So that they might believe in him. And have their sins forgiven. And have everlasting life. Alright, so this, that's as brief. That's brief enough. I think I wanted to make this as brief as possible, but Jesus laid down his life to, to purify us, to sanctify us, to make us perfect so that if we believe in him, that our sins will be forgiven and we shall be born of the Spirit of God and shall have ever lasting life because 
Now, how do we know we have everlasting life? I mean, a lot of people have died. That don't mean that don't mean nothing. But the fact that Jesus not only died, but he resurrected from the dead, that through him we can do the same. All right, and that's where we put our hope is in the resurrection. And um, his death covers our sins, and his resurrection is to life everlasting. And with, so we put all our trust, all our faith in him because we know we can't do it ourselves. Right? 